Athletes face complex dilemmas every day. One in particular, the divisive debate about protests during the national anthem at NFL games, has been making frequent headlines this season. Not only for their cultural significance, but also because of the questions that have been raised about legal rights, contracts for professional athletes, and conflicts of interest. Our next speaker will be discussing these legal considerations. Tonight, I am pleased to introduce our scholar practitioner, Carla Variali. An attorney, Carla has specialized in sports industry law and is a member of the Sports Lawyers Association. She has litigated cases for Major League Baseball, the teams, the players, and has won cases involving injuries from promotional activities at sporting venues. In addition to her work as a practicing attorney, Carla is also an instructor in our sports management program at the School of Professional Studies, teaching sports law and ethics. Tonight, she is here to talk to us about a topic making headlines today, forced patriotism, conflicts of interest, and the National Football League's anthem protests. Please join me in welcoming Carla Variali. I'm glad that Shannon started off by speaking about the transformative power of sport to her as an individual. One of the things I want to talk about tonight is the transformative power of sport on society and how we think about ethical issues. Um, patriotism is something that is defined as love of country, devotion to country. It should be something that unites us, yet we find it's something that does not unite us. It's been in the news a lot, as Jason has said recently. People have criticized players who are taking a knee in order to protest injustice and inequality. In fact, some people believe that what they are protesting is our military, our flag, our anthem. Our pr vice president recently walked out of an NFL game in protest of the protest. So how is it that something that is supposed to unite us is in fact dividing us? I'm not a gymnast, but I'm going to talk about a few legal gymnastics. Um, our Supreme Court jurisprudence has held that forced patriotism is not acceptable. It's not acceptable for the state to compel patriotic behavior. For us, we here in New York and in New Jersey, after 9-11, had a couple of cases come up. They're not United States Supreme Court cases, but they were important cases that involved venues, one being Yankee Stadium, one being, so it's not just about football, and one being a minor league baseball stadium where the Newark Bears played. In each of those cases, when patrons did not stand for God Bless America, they were removed from the stadium and ejected. One patron at Yankee Stadium was removed because he went to the bathroom while God Bless America was being sung during the seventh inning. And that was an offense that merited an ejection and a, and a subsequent arrest. God Bless America, by the way, is not the <laughs> national anthem, lest we forget. So if you're going to force patriotism, at least get your anthem right. Um, each of those cases did not end well for the teams or the venues for the simple reason that as a matter of law, you cannot compel someone to engage in patriotic behavior. We fast forward now to what's going on with Colin Kaepernick and the NFL. There is a tension, there is an issue about his right to peaceful protest and the right or the concern of the owners and the league that their brand is being damaged because the debate is divisive about what Colin is protesting. Many people are offended because they feel as though it's questioning our military or our dedication to our American way of life. The people who have protested, and I would recommend a recent op-ed piece by his teammate, um, uh, Eric Reed, stated that it was in fact showing support for the military but protesting injustice. And in fact, Eric Reed described 
The reason he took a knee was because it reminded him of a flag at half mast. So quite the opposite of being unpatriotic, it seems that they are engaging in quite patriotic speech and activity that should be protected and that is worthy of protection. But the ethical dilemma becomes how does one balance those interests with the interests of spectators who maybe don't want to be protested to, or perhaps find the message objectionable. That's where the tension is. And what I think is interesting about sport is that sport is, calls us to a higher level of conduct. It calls us to be our best, most virtuous self. It calls us to connect with other people in community. And if we look at what's going on in the NFL now through that, perhaps it helps us foster some understanding. And that to me is also quite patriotic, learning tolerance and understanding of other people's opinions and beliefs and peacefully coexisting with them. When I was preparing for these remarks, I was reminded of another athlete who in order to exercise, his conscience took a very unpopular stand about 50 years ago. And in fact, sports writers and editors and newspaper people called him every sort of name, unpatriotic, a demagogue, a fool, any number of things. A revered sports icon described him in a way that was extraordinarily unflattering. The icon said, his protest is disheartening to our young soldiers. His protest is not right because he has made millions off of the American people and he is not grateful in return in showing respect. That athlete was not Colin Kaepernick. That athlete was Cassius Clay known as Muhammad Ali. The sports figure that criticized him was Jackie Robinson. And when you think about the enormous pain and isolation that Mr. Ali must have felt, it made me feel enormous empathy towards Colin Kaepernick and his bravery, regardless of whether one agrees with his position and his methodology in expressing it. Muhammad Ali was a sports icon who refused to be drafted and conscientiously objected to the Vietnam War. He undoubtedly paid a huge price for that. He was stripped of titles. He was prosecuted as a draft dodger. For years he litigated his case. It ultimately went to the Supreme Court. And he ultimately prevailed. When Muhammad Ali died, ironically, a few months before the uh, Colin Kaepernick protests with the 49ers started, he was praised as an icon and a hero, including by our current president. And in fact, sometimes I like to imagine if Muhammad Ali had been alive and had been witness to the anthem kneeling and Colin Kaepernick's uh, protest, I would like to imagine the sort of conversation they might have had with each other about this. And as I imagine it, I think that he probably would have offered support and comfort. And there's a part of me that thinks that perhaps he would have said to him, give it a few decades. <laughs> Thank you.